We add the concept of transhumanism is something that is in the uh, public uh, square in terms of its importance. Uh, neur neuronal implants is, is, is coming, no doubt about it. Genetic engineering uh, is uh, <clears throat> the ethics of that, but the technology is, is clearly there. Um, bringing in your expertise in, in the science of consciousness, what can you say about transhumanism in terms of when consciousness can be altered or changed through one of these technologies, when when would you, in essence, classify the change as as, as a new species, as something that's not human, but as something uh, transhuman? The issue of transhumanism is a huge question. And like many, um, I don't think we have good answers yet. In a way, there are already cases of transhumanism, even if you take a drug, right? If you take yeah. a drug that changes your conscious experience, you're already a transhuman, at least to the period of time where you took the drug um, or the hallucination uh, inducing one. So um, what would happen when this change becomes permanent? When you have something in your brain that uh, allows you to permanently experience the world differently? And will there be a threshold where after which it would be a completely different kind of consciousness? It's a huge question and, and to be honest, I don't have a very good answer for you because I, I am not sure that there even is a threshold of that sort. So I'm trying to think, you know, the only way I can think about it is to um, go back to the realities I do know because imagining the re unknown realities is more complicated. So for the realities I do know, I know that we changed our cognition and to some extent our experience dramatically with screens that have become an, you know, an indispensable part of our lives. And I do think that we process information, and there are some studies suggesting that we process information differently mm -hmm. due to screen exposure. Did we become a different species? No. Will there be a point, but the change is happening and it is gradual. Think about other revolutions in human history. When we started manufacturing tools, when we started speaking, some of them were um, fundamental in the sense that you can think about a, a different species. Speaking humans and non-speaking pre-humans mm. in a way are fundamentally different. Will it be the same level of revolution? It might. Will we be able to put our finger on it in real time? Probably not. It would have to be some historian sitting 20,000 years from, from now looking back and saying that was another point where we branched out in the evolutionary mm. tree, so to speak. Mm. But I don't think we can do it, definitely not now, and even when it actually mm. happens. In the transhumanism discussion, I don't hear a lot of talk about consciousness as being part of it. Right. Um, should it be? I think so. I think that um, given the importance that I assign and I think should be assigned to consciousness and its um, critical role in the way we behave, then if there is a change that is going to change our conscious experience, that this is something that we must take into account. It also relates to information processing, which is a related phenomenon. So if the way we process information about the world it changes, if we start enhancing, so imagine that now we experience everything more vividly. That would be interesting. You know, we have, uh, in my lab, we are studying the richness of perception, trying to understand exactly how wide it is or how rich it is. This is work led by Ronnie Hirschhorn. Um, now imagine that we can substantially increase it. What, would, what effect would that have on pleasure seeking and pain avoidance? Uh, these are all things that have practical, important meaning uh, to our everyday lives. So I would definitely not neglect the discussion on consciousness, nor for uh, transhumanism, neither for AI. Uh, which is another field where this is relevant.